it's uh, Labor Day, September 3rd. We uh, overnighted on Sandy Hook. Uh, we've certainly been to better places. Had a, uh, obviously a good day yesterday, uh, getting through the East River, uh, anchored in Sandy uh, Hook. Um, it was a crazy uh, place to anchor. It looked like there was some dredging work going on. Uh, in addition, we almost ran aground uh, running into some shallow water. It went from 20 feet to about uh, uh, 6 feet. And uh, at, at 8 feet, we uh, were able to back down and get out of there and uh, find a, uh, a better place. Uh, turns out, uh, shortly after that, uh, it was early evening and uh, another boat came in and promptly uh, ran aground probably two boat lengths uh, behind us. So uh, that turned into a a mess. Uh, we uh, helped get him off uh, by uh, using a uh, kedge anchor and the problem was they were dragging their anchor back to the boat uh, over our bow and uh, properly uh, hooked up with our chain. So uh, it, it just wasn't good. Anyway, uh, all's well. We're, uh, uh, we departed Sandy Hook about uh, 11 a.m. this morning and we are on our way. So. Uh, trying to make uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Should be about 40 hours to do that. Uh, if we need to bail out, we'll, uh, we'll turn into uh, uh, Cape May, which is about halfway. So uh, about 20, 24 hours somewhere. There. So yeah, uh, part of a uh, two-day uh, uh, passage for us. Uh, Darcy's first uh, overnight. So looking forward to it. Wonderful day. It's uh, no wind and we're going to be powering again. Uh, seems to be the uh, name of the game, but uh, uh, what do you do? You power. You get there. Sandy Hook, New Jersey is just outside the Verrazano Bridge and New York Harbor. It is a good staging area for heading south down the New Jersey coast as it tends to be well protected in case you need to wait for a weather window to open up. We had a good window for two days beginning on Labor Day, so we took it and headed down the mid-Atlantic coast with a final destination of Norfolk, Virginia, and then into the inner coastal waterway that we would transit to avoid having to round Cape Hatteras and Cape Lookout. The forecast was for a southerly breeze that afternoon that would quickly fade that night and leave us without any wind the following two days. We had plenty of fuel on board to complete this 240 mile leg using only our engine. We were hoping to sail, but with the wind on our nose, we knew we could make better time by powering through the waves instead of tacking down the shoreline. And as the wind began to die that evening, we were left with sloppy wave action until around midnight. So we're into this for how long? Well, we started at 11 o'clock this morning. It's now, uh, what do we say, 5 o'clock? I think four so. 4 o'clock? Somewhere in there? 1,600 hours. What 1,600. Is that? That's uh, 4 o'clock. Okay, yeah. 4 o'clock. So yeah, just continue to pound into these uh, waves. Got a uh, headwind, uh, yeah, true wind speed is probably about 12, 13 knots. Uh, but yeah, it's a short chop that just uh, kind of kills us. So we're plodding along doing, I don't know, five, five and a half. Yes, maybe, maybe six. Yeah, slap a couple of waves, takes you down to five, maybe even under, like that. Like that. <laughs> We make it lots of those. Yeah, we're kind of motor sailing. Uh, we we uh, fell off a little bit toward land here, so uh, just trying to get a good angle, make it comfortable. It's and all good. Then, yeah, another four hours, we'll uh, actually uh, be able to uh, fall off another uh, probably 20, 25 degrees, which will really help. But uh, I think by then the wind's supposed to start dying. <laughs> so. Oh well. It's a good thing our engine's running yeah, really engine's, well. Yeah, engine's running great. <laughs> Iron so. Jenny. Iron Jenny. Update. Maybe another five hours. Yeah. All right. It's Tuesday, uh, September 4th. Um, Labor Day was yesterday. We're uh, yeah, plodding along. Uh, as you can see, there is absolutely no wind uh, compared to what we had yesterday, uh, just pounding into the uh, waves. So, so, yeah, we're doing uh, just under six knots. Uh, uh, trying to conserve fuel, we uh, probably used uh, too much yesterday uh, pounding into those waves, but uh, you do what you have to do. So we're uh, looking to get in, uh, I don't know, probably another uh, 18 hours or so. Uh, just coming down the uh, uh, Maryland coast, 
uh, past the Delaware River our uh, day this morning and uh, yeah, on our way to uh, the Chesapeake. So, uh, there you saw some dolphins, uh, a pot of dolphins when I went down to uh, take my, uh, my nap. Uh, only got a couple hours of sleep this morning, so very busy evening. Uh, Playing with uh, freighters and uh, dredges and all sorts of uh, uh, maritime uh, vessels uh, on the water in the middle of the night. So, uh, keep fighting the water. Uh, Wednesday morning, uh, September 5th, just coming in, uh, just uh, entering the Chesapeake, that's the, uh, the bridge and tunnel behind us, uh, along with a uh, our freighter that we're uh, monitoring here. I just got outside the shipping channel, given plenty of room, so, uh, yeah, had a great uh, time yesterday, although there really wasn't any wind, we uh, uh, powered the whole way, but it was flat seas and uh, very little just just like this had this all last night uh, low humidity so it was just comfortable shorts and uh, t-shirt on all night so got in uh, yeah real early this morning probably about uh, two three o'clock and uh, just shut down the engine uh, stayed outside just because of the shipping traffic it's uh, yeah very busy area so felt it best to uh, just hang outside wait for uh, some daybreak and uh, come in so now we have a uh, slip uh, for two days in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, where, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, catch up with life here, haven't been without internet or uh, uh, the common amenities that everybody enjoys, so uh, looking forward to that. <laughs> yes, we are. Norfolk, Virginia is a major shipping port in addition to being the base for the U.S. Navy's Atlantic Fleet. So there's always shipping or naval traffic to contend with as we transited Trusted Big Bay, heading for the intercoastal waterway that yeah, starts at the south end of Norfolk. Up higher, tucked in. Probably on both sides. We passed the naval base and marveled at the range of military ships, ranging from the aircraft carriers to hospital ships that were in port. Once we were past the naval base and shipping port, we were approaching the start of the intercoastal waterway that would take us through this leg of our trip south, where we hoped to spend considerable time enjoying short day trips and scenic vistas. But first we had to get through industrial Norfolk in order to get there. And we are now officially on the uh, intercoastal waterway. We're uh, within uh, mile marker uh, zero, uh, probably about a quarter mile down the uh, Intercoastal, so yeah, rather uh, industrial uh, spot that we uh, spent in last night, but uh, we figured, hey, today we'll uh, just get the heck out of Dodge and start our way down to uh, Brunswick, Georgia. The first of many bridges to come in the ICW. We then passed the USS Eisenhower aircraft carrier that was in for upgrades and maintenance. After purchasing Kindred Spirit and on our delivery to Rhode Island, we had an encounter in the middle of the night with the Eisenhower just north of Cape Hatteras at 2 a.m. one morning. They were conducting high-speed turn maneuvers near our location as we transited northbound. They had contacted us on our VHF radio to let us know their intentions and that they were aware of our location and would stay at least three miles away from us, for which we were thankful. While she was lit up and easy to see, we also knew there were numerous support warships in the area that we could not see or identify. She got a call to Gold Coast of Southbound at the Hammerhead Green. Pushing a loaded red flag headed down. Oh, that's a dismal swamp, eh? Well, just cleared that uh, 64. Highway 64 bridge, which is uh, 65 feet, and we are again 64 and a half mass, but yes, lower tide. And that takes you to the dismal swamp.
We were finally through the industrial section of Norfolk and beginning the scenic route of the intercoastal. Today's passage was only 10 miles, but they were hectic, with bridges and barges to contend with along the way. We were going to overnight in Great Bridge, Virginia that evening, where there was a lock we needed at first transit prior to tying up for the night. The next morning was hot and humid as we took the 9 a.m. bridge opening to begin our passage to our next destination of Coinjack, North Carolina. Today would be another day of bridges and barges as we continued our southerly route. September 7th. Um, yeah, so yesterday we obviously left uh, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, came down the uh, intercoastal and uh, overnighted at uh, Great Bridge, Virginia, which is uh, kind of an interesting historical place from a Revolutionary War standpoint. So, uh, that up this morning, uh, we're just trying to time some bridge openings. Our goal is to get to uh, Coinjack, North Carolina. We're probably just uh, crossing into North Carolina here pretty shortly. So, uh, another hot muggy day and uh, yeah, we're watching uh, Florence dancing around the Atlantic. So kind of curious to see what's going on right now. All the models show it doing a, a hard right turn as it approaches the U.S. But uh, uh, another reason for heading south, I think, uh, lowers our probability of getting uh, caught up in that. But, you know, that, that can all change uh, pretty rapidly. So, uh, yeah, a couple of bridges. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's a it's a canal area, so uh, it's uh, straight as can be versus the uh, river flow uh, that we had yesterday. So yeah, we'll uh, making some uh, slow time, but it's the intercoastal. Nothing happens faster up here. We then came to the Pungo Ferry Bridge, which is supposed to be a 65 foot height clearance, but there were reports that it was more like 64 feet at low tide. This had us a bit concerned, but the tide was still in our favor, so we passed through almost at a dead stop. We made it without anything touching. 
There's our dreaded bridge. And we cleared probably with, I don't know, inches maybe? The uh, numbers stated 64 and a half. And we are 64 and a half. So uh, we just squeaked underneath that and so happy to be through it. And Captain's smiling too. Absolutely. <laughs> and my hand's still shaking. Yeah, we still have the Windex on the top of the Spire and the VHF antenna, so it wasn't even close. Oh, yeah, it was close. <laughs> we made it to Coin Jack, North Carolina, late that afternoon. While the National Hurricane Center does a good job with tracking hurricanes, we've been following a website called Tropical Tidbits, hosted by Levi Cowan, who does a good job of taking the National Hurricane Center information and providing expanded information on hurricanes. His information that evening gave us pause as there was now a much higher probability that Hurricane Florence was going to develop into a major hurricane and potentially threaten the Carolina coast instead of heading north prior to landfall. When things get beyond that, you can see uh, the general track toward the west-northwest, and by day five, Wednesday afternoon, this is where they have the hurricane moving on a heading that generally takes it toward the U.S. This does not mean it can't turn away from the U.S. before hitting. That is still very much on the table, but a growing number of models today do show a, a hit on the U.S. at some point. So beyond the end of this forecast, we might see tracks that take it somewhere toward the United States. It could even be farther south than that. You've got to be prepared for that possibility. You can also see the Hurricane Center forecast reintensification to a hurricane uh, later this weekend or on Monday, and then a major hurricane. That means winds of over 115 miles per hour uh, later in the week, and this is expected to be a strong hurricane. So if a landfall does occur, it would bring significant impacts with it beyond just rainfall, wind and storm surge, etc. So this would be something to take seriously if indeed it, it does end up forecast to hit the U.S. somewhere. At this point, still many days away. We're talking at least six days before a potential hit on the U.S. if one does indeed occur. But we have enough evidence that a hit might happen at this point that if you live anywhere from the Florida Peninsula to New England, make sure your hurricane plans ready to hurricane is about to approach if it does. For now, lots of uncertainty. This is about all we can say, the official forecast for now. After this point, question marks over here, all right? So no need to be too concerned just yet, but be ready just in case. All right. Okay, so why does this look so familiar, John? Yeah, we've uh, been down this route before. It's uh, Sunday, uh, September 9th, uh, and we are northbound. Uh, we got down to uh, Coin Jack, uh, North Carolina. Uh, there were some updates to the uh, Hurricane Florence forecast, and uh, it looked like uh, uh, the modeling uh, was going to uh, bring that hurricane in uh, to the south of us. So uh, we decided to, uh, we spent a, a, an extra day in Coin Jack just to uh, monitor the situation. Uh, we decided it'd probably be best to uh, head north. Uh, we're heading back to uh, Great Bridge, Virginia. Uh, so it gets us uh, probably about another 35 miles north. Uh, it, given our options, it's, uh, it's probably a good place to uh, try to hunker down and uh, stay. Uh, there's uh, uh, it's pretty well protected in there and uh, we'll have a lock right in front of us so that'll uh, protect us from any uh, surge from the uh, ocean. Uh, yeah. The other thing that's going on is the uh, uh, there's a drawbridge right before the lock uh, that was struck by lightning last night, so uh, that bridge is uh, inoperable. But uh, uh, on our side of the bridge, there is a, a dock uh, that we'll be uh, tying up to. Uh, we've been monitoring, calling the uh, marina that's right across the, the canal from them, and they say there's still a lot of space available. Uh, we have not seen anybody uh, coming northbound with us, so uh, we're hoping to get a spot there and uh, uh, reassess the situation, see what's going on. Uh, like I said, there's uh, there's good shopping, restaurants, uh, a hotel that would be a, a couple block walk from the boat, so uh, pretty well set up and 
yeah, yeah, given the other options, it's probably a good uh, good place to uh, ride this one out. Looks like it's going to be nasty, so uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. Being optimistic. That's all you can do. We tied up to the transient dock by the bridge that was now inoperable due to the lightning strike a couple of days ago. They were opening it manually twice a day at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Our initial plan was to stay here to ride Florence out, but we still had our concerns as we were on the north side of the hurricane, which would be the more intense side. The forecast also indicated the storm surge and rainfall totals would be quite high. Our only two other options were to go up the Chesapeake Bay or to go out to sea and head north. We ruled out going up the Chesapeake as we were unfamiliar with the area and heading out to sea to go north also seemed like a bad idea should Florence take a turn off the coast and run us down. We contacted our weather router and he recommended us to head out to sea and get back to New York as he had a high degree of confidence that we would have a decent weather window for the next two days to get us to safety. Kindred Spirit was already loaded with fuel and water, Darcy did a quick run for food and we made it through the 6 p.m. bridge opening and won our way through Norfolk in the dark, finally hitting the open ocean at 1 a.m. The second night, the fog settled in at 9 p.m. and we had very limited visibility until we reached Sandy Hook. And here we are. Did you push the button? Yep. Okay, <laughs> obviously you're Yeah, editing. it's red. Okay, start again. <laughs> okay, so here we are on uh, Wednesday, 9-12, as you can see. It is very foggy. Foggy night, foggy morning. It's what, um, about 8.30 in the morning right now? It's probably about 8.30 in the morning and uh, kind of wish we could see a little bit better. But thank goodness we've got our Ray Marine um, that tells us where everybody's at and uh, kind of steering by uh, electronics. Sail by barrel. Sail by barrel. Okay, we can finally see. I don't know if you can see that uh, barge up there with the duck, but that's what we've been following behind uh, on our uh, AIS. We knew they were there, but it's just delightful to be able to see them. Um, the fog is lifting, which makes us very happy. Is Captain happy? Might be able to get some sleep. I won't tonight. That's for sure. We should be in Sandy Hook about 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, yep. Yeah. Take on a mooring. We'll see how swelly that is, but at that point we won't even care. It'll be mooring, beer, bed. Perfect. And guess what's back? The fog. We're now coming into the channel going into Sandy Hook. Going fairly slow, looking for markers. Make sure that they are where they're supposed to be on the as they are on the charts. Just eerie. This passage was finally over, and we were mentally and physically worn out. As we later found out, Florence pounded North Carolina south of Coin Jack, where we were. While they were outside of the hurricane force winds, they did experience tropical storm force winds, heavy flooding, and a substantial storm surge. We're pleased with the decisions we made to keep us and kindred spirits safe. From Sandy Hook, we again made our way up the East River and into Long Island Sound and anchored in Port Washington, New York again, where we would wait out for our next opportunity to head south again.